This is the freeze. There's an article in NJ.com that's titled Yankees Giddy about number one pick Trey Sweeney, who has, quote, impact player potential. His stats at Eastern Illinois University this year were impressive. He batted 382 with 14 home runs and 58 ribbies in 48 games. He's a shortstop. He's six foot four. He's got a sweet left-handed swing. He's just 21 years old, so he's still probably a couple of years away at least from being in the big leagues. The Yankees do tend to progress their players through the minor leagues very slowly. However, college players are a little bit more developed. Sometimes you'll see them advance quickly. We saw Jabba Chamberlain and Ian Kennedy both make their debut about a year after they were drafted. But then the younger guys, like Phil Hughes, could take a while. Phil Hughes took three years. Aaron Judge was drafted in 2013, and it took him three years. He didn't make his debut in the major leagues until age 24. I think that the way the game is going, you're seeing a lot more guys break in at like 20, 21, 22 years old. Maybe not 22, but definitely 20 and 21-year-olds seem to be coming up to the big leagues more often than when I was a kid. Guys are just better younger. You got the Ronald Acuna's. You got the Vladimir Guerrero Juniors. You got the Mike Trouts, the Juan Sotos. When I was a kid, it was Ken Griffey Jr., It was Alex Rodriguez, but not a whole lot of other really young guys making their debuts. Jeter made his debut at 21. Melky Cabrera, I think, made his debut for the Yankees. He was either 19 or 20 when he came up. So occasionally the Yankees will get guys up to the major leagues at a younger age, but typically when they get them at a younger age. For the Yankees, they like to give guys development time, so I wouldn't count on seeing Trey Sweeney at least for a few years. I'd say at least two to three years. As it stands, he's a shortstop. At 6'4", I think he's probably a little bit too tall to play shortstop. You generally like your shortstops to be a little bit smaller, generally 6'1", 6'2". DJ LeMayhew is a second baseman. He's 6'4". But with Sweeney having that classic left-handed swing, you're going to want to get him in the big leagues as soon as possible if he can hit. If he proves that he's an impact bat like they think he is, I think they're going to want to get him to the major leagues in a couple of years, which means you're going to have to move him off a shortstop because you have other shortstops that are ahead of him on the depth chart. You've got Anthony Volpe, who was just promoted to high A Hudson Valley. I found out about that last night. You've still got Glaber Torres. He's still pretty young. I think the Yankees are eventually going to have to move him off of shortstop. Even though he's had a nice season defensively, His offense was much better when he was playing second base. It's an easier position for him. Allows him maybe to focus more on his swing. DJ LeMahieu, I think, might end up at first base and third base, kind of alternating back and forth. But I like Sweeney as a third baseman or a first baseman. When I think of left-handed hitting third baseman, I always go to Robin Ventura. He did a really nice job with the Yankees, one of the great all-time defensive third baseman, great classic left-handed swing, spent some time with the White Sox, with the Yankees, with the Mets. I really enjoyed watching Robin Ventura hit. I don't think that we're going to get Robin Ventura level out of Sweeney, but you never know. The guy hit 382 in college, but then again, this was not a powerhouse school. Not that playing at a big college program guarantees success. Eric Jagailo was a former Yankees first-round draft pick. He played at Notre Dame, another classic left-handed swing that never did much. I've got to say, I've been less than impressed with the job that Damon Oppenheimer and Brian Cashman have done at drafting players. They seem to be pretty good at identifying the diamonds in the rough for other teams and other systems, like Domingo Herman, for example. He was not ranked highly as a Marlins prospect. He was kind of the middle of the road. But the Yankees viewed him as their number one pitching prospect. So when they got him, they were giddy about that, just like they are about Sweeney. And he's ended up being a pretty good pitcher at times, although you know, recently he's had some struggles. I think he's a bit tired. He's had some off-the-field issues as well. You know, They went out and got Luke Voigt. They picked up Gio Urshela for pennies on the dollar. So the Yankees do have some decent scouting abilities, but they do seem to miss with their draft picks 
quite a lot. Baseball is not one of those sports where the physical skills always translate to on-the-field performance. You know, you can look at a lineman in football and say, wow, that guy is 400 pounds. It's going to be really hard for somebody to push him. You can look at a basketball player and say, wow, that guy's seven foot three. He's going to be good at getting rebounds. But you look at baseball and you say, well, this guy has a good arm. This guy seems to make contact. But the competition is going to be a big determining factor in how someone performs. Playing baseball is really hard. Hitting a baseball is the hardest thing to do in sports, especially these days with guys throwing 100 miles an hour with all sorts of gunk on them. It's worth noting that Sweeney was ranked overall by Major League Baseball Pipeline as the 55th best prospect. They projected him to go 55th overall. The Yankees took him at number 20. That's called reaching. If you use your first round draft pick on a player that's ranked 35 spots lower or higher, depending on the way you want to look at it, then the pick you have, you better hit. That's like if you had the number one overall pick. And instead of taking the consensus number one, you took somebody who was ranked as an early second rounder. That's kind of the same length of difference. Now, I think that the separation between the top players in the draft and you know, the 30 through 50 type players in the draft, it's probably a bit of a skills gap. I mean, Jack Leiter, you watch Jack Leiter, and it's clear that he's a top five draft pick. This guy's got some of the best stuff I've ever seen, ever. And he's just electric out there. And this guy Sweeney, who was taken 18 spots later, I never heard of. Never heard of him. I do like the Yankees taking a left-handed hitter. That seems to be something that they haven't done a lot of recently. People have mentioned that Brian Cashman doesn't think that the lefties are successful because of the shift these days, but maybe he's counting on Major League Baseball getting rid of the shift in upcoming years. We know that the collective bargaining is going on soon. We know that Rob Manfred has not been hesitant about introducing new and sometimes controversial rules. We know that he wants to speed up the pace of play, but also increase action in the game. And I think that eliminating the shift would do that. I also like the fact that he's a contact hitter, 382 average. That's nothing to sneeze at no matter where you're playing. I don't care if it's Little League. 382 is 382. But the Yankees do rely heavily on stats and stat projections through time when drafting a player. And I think that this is a year where maybe stats can't be as reliable. You got a lot of guys who didn't play last year. A lot of pitchers who you know, didn't pitch last year, weren't as sharp, lost a year of development time. Whereas hitters can go hit off of a machine. Pitchers can't face live hitters without games. They have to throw to a catcher or throw against a tarp or a brick wall. So I think hitters probably had a little bit of an advantage this year. That's at the college level anyway. High school probably too. Here's a quote from Damon Oppenheimer, the director of scouting for the Yankees. He says, we're really excited to have selected Trey Sweeney. He has excellent raw power and contact ability. He can hit to all fields and has strong plate discipline. At shortstop, he has a good clock. He doesn't play rushed and has good field awareness. His timing for both getting to ground balls and getting the ball across the infield is excellent. We also really like Trey's makeup, and he's smart with good instincts. With his overall tool set, we believe he has the potential to be an impact player. Now I'm going to read you a quote from Damon Oppenheimer on Eric Jagailo. This is taken the day the Yankees drafted him. Eric Jagailo is a physical left-handed hitter with plus-plus power. He performed well in Cape Cod and shows a good combination of plate discipline and power. Sounds familiar. Sounds familiar. I don't think that plate discipline is as big a deal in the high school and college levels as the Yankees project it to be. I think plate discipline is something that can be taught as you get to the big leagues. I prefer taking the best athletes that I can, regardless of whatever position they play. I want guys who can do the basic baseball stuff. I want guys who can hit, who can hit to all fields, who can run, who can 
throw with good velocity, who can run down balls in the outfield. Give me great athletes, and we can teach them to be great baseball players. That's just my philosophy anyway. I've seen a lot of reports saying the Yankees reached on a number of their draft picks. It strikes me that Brian Cashman is trying to be the smartest guy in the room and maybe make up for some of the bonehead decisions he's made over the last few years. But to his credit, some of his recent draft picks have been really good. Austin Wells is good. Anthony Volpe has been good. Some of their international free agent signings have been great. Peraza is looking great. Jason Dominguez is getting super hyped up though he uh, had a couple of rough at bats in the Futures game, did hit one ball hard. So my thoughts on Trey Sweeney overall, I like the idea of a left-handed contact hitter with a little bit of power. Don't think he's going to stick at shortstop, even though they were praising his shortstop skills. He may move over to third base. Maybe you're hoping for a Robin Ventura type, but I don't think he's going to be in the big leagues until he's at least like 23 years old, but I could be wrong. The Yankees may be able to wrap up a deal with him soon, and get him in the minor leagues. And if he rakes and plays well on defense, then sky's the limit. But until the Yankees start having better luck in the draft and producing actual major leaguers who are impact players on a consistent basis, I'm going to always be skeptical of anyone they draft and hype up. Gentlemen, summer is here. Are you ready to unveil your beach bod? Well, you're in luck. Our friends at Manscaped just launched their fourth generation performance package, which includes the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the 4.0. Complement your summer bod with a trim from the leaders in male grooming. The sun is shining and calling your name, fellas. Join the two million men who trust Manscaped and get ready for hot guy summer by going to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping with the code NYYRECAPS. Manscaped is even throwing in two free gifts to their Performance Package 4.0, the Manscaped Boxers and the Shed Travel Bag. Bring your comfort and boxers to the next level. Once again, get 20% off and free shipping with the code NYYRECAPS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with NYYRECAPS at manscaped.com. Escape the shrubs and weeds this summer and shine with Manscaped.